Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the one and only Monday Night Live. And guess who's here? Hey, hello, Marshy. Say hello. Bless him. Marshall's in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I uh, would love to know in the comments, if you're tuning in, first of all, which city you're in? And secondly, what do you think of my beautiful moustache from November? I would love to hear what you think in the comments. Please drop in there so I know you're alive and breathing. We've got a pretty special episode of Monday Night Live in store for you today. Um, I've got a guest joining us who is based in Melbourne and um, very kind of her to join us because I know it's a, it's a bit later there. It's, all, it's uh, 9 p.m. in Melbourne at the moment and uh, they've just come out of lockdown. So Yen's probably been partying for the last week. Um, but we'll hear from her in a second. But just to give you a bit of background on her entrepreneurial story, um, she is the founder of an e-commerce store called Billionaire Beauties, which has got an incredible growth story. Um, the founder, uh, founder magazine quoted her as uh, growing from doing 30000 in revenue to uh, over $300,000 in, in six months. Incredible uh, growth there. She's started a business during COVID called Curve Sculpting. Um, so now officially a serial entrepreneur. Um, thanks for the comments in the, uh, <laughs> what is that slug under your nose? <laughs> Yeah, the feedback hasn't been fantastic so far, Paul. Check out the process of that mo. Hey, Amber, who else have we got on the line? Who's joining us from uh, LinkedIn? We'd love to hear from you in the comments. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm Monday Night Live welcome to none other than Yen Japney. Yen, how are you tonight? Uh, I'm great. Thank you, Nathaniel. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's the second I was interview like, we, I was we've done. I like chilly laughing with your little mo. <laughs> Well, it's getting there. This is only a week of progress. So, you know, we've got three more weeks to go. So I'm looking forward to seeing how wow. how big it gets. Uh, uh, Ian reckons I look a bit like a porn star. Nope. <laughs> Marshall is as handsome as ever. Uh, Marshall's taking the limelight as normal. Hey, Paula, how are you? Thanks for joining us. I'm not sure what All right, Yen. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, you've, you've got such a, um, a fantastic repertoire of businesses, um, and I'm sure it, there's a lot of businesses, uh, well, not a lot, but I, there's always, normally when I interview entrepreneurs, let's get this out correctly, mm. when normally when I interview entrepreneurs, there's a couple of stories of businesses that didn't work out. Um, when was your first business and did you have any experiences that, that didn't work out before you started the one that had all the success? Mm. So I actually started uh, my first side hustle when I was 22, 23 years old as a side hustle during um, a full-time job. I was working in hospitality and I started uh, actually a lash business and I, I spent a lot of time just going back and forth with China just with the packaging, how I want my packaging to be perfect, how the lash had to be perfect, how each material and everything. So I was very tedious with all the details to the point where it, it took so long for me to even launch the business. And once, you know, everyone started selling it and everyone was selling it for cheap, that's when, um, yeah, I, I just ended up having so much stock. So that business, I would say- so you I wouldn't say the park like from the start? Went, yeah. I spent too much time on unnecessary things. So um, when I launched Billionaire Beauties, it was purely on the yeah. back end of having my first website and then I sold it on Instagram and it just became a hit. So um, within the first three months, I made $90,000 and I was like, oh my God, this wow. is like crazy money. I, th I think I should quit my job. So wow. yeah, it was pretty crazy. And what was your job? Um, I was in. I was doing waitressing actually. So wow, I, um, okay. what, I love what making awesome cocktails. <laughs> so it was well, that's me. a gandy skill to have. And so you, but so it, you, so it, you started with 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 lashes, which for the men out there, mm. it means eyelashes, right? <laughs> and then <laughs> and then did, and then you, so you further you developed more products, or mm. how did Billionaire Beauties evolve from there? 
So Billionaire Beauties, we started selling uh, Solotica. So I found distribution to sell um, the, orig the authentic Solotica. And that was very hard. Oh, it was actually me and a friend. Me and uh, I won't say her name. Um, we were at <laughs> home and we were like, oh, we really wanted the contact lens because they look really realistic. And then so we ordered it from Brazil and it took literally three months to arrive. And it was quite expensive. And next time we, I wanted to try other colors. So me and her would, you know, chip in together to buy it. And again, it took months and months and months and months. And we're like, oh my God, we need to, I need to do something about this. And the demand was really high. And then so we start, I started to look into it. And then um, that was when it just went viral. This is when it only started. Um, and we were the first uh, website online to sell this. So that was um, our point of difference. Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant. And um, has Instagram been the main source of, of, of your success, would you say, in your growth story? Um, Instagram definitely really did because at the start, Instagram and Facebook actually, because Facebook used to show all the reach and then and like literally if we put a video out or photo out, it would just reach a lot of people. Nowadays, you know, you have to put money into it. So you got to be a little bit more strategic. So back then I'll just, you know, I'll do 100 a day and then I'll put that up to 200 a day. And then it'll just, you know, it'll, it'll share a lot of, um, to a lot of people. Nowadays it's a little bit more complicated than that. So you got to be a little bit more strategic than just um, posting whatever. Sure, um, yeah. Yeah, social media and back then was a lot easier. It's, yeah. You, you so have done a fantastic job. Yeah. That, yeah, that's okay. It's a bit choppy. Um, so I've seen also you've had a lot of success. We talked about this in your LinkedIn Heroes interview um, oh, with yeah. <laughs> search engine optimization, um, the amount of you know blog blogs that you've got on your website. It's very clear that you've spent a lot of time building that website mm. out. And, and I get the impression that you're a, a bit of a hustler, a bit of a hard worker. Um, mm -hmm. How have you found... How have you found managing such a demanding professional schedule? Um, have you have you um, got any tips you can share with the audience about how to be more efficient and productive when growing a business? So just to put that to um, perspective, so when I started, when I launched my business, it was just on my own with my web developer. So literally, I'd be doing the posting. I replied to customers. I answer, I call customers, I email customers, I post on social media, I speak to influencers, I do the marketing. So it was a lot. And it got to the point where I was like, I'm like, if I don't work, I'm not making money. So I had to start thinking of a way to delegate my tasks because I'm a perfectionist. It took me a little bit longer. But once I got like, once I knew that I was so capped with how much I could make and what I could sell, that was when... I went and looked for a virtual assistant and, you know, staff to then hire. And I started with, it, it took me a long time actually, because I still was like a control freak. So I really wanted to control and micromanage and, you know, I'm like, no, yeah. that's not good enough. So yeah. So later on, once I got the rhythm of like, you know, getting a really good staff and they're willing to do everything. Like I, there's so many ways that you can like say, for instance, um, stuff on the computer, I would screen record. And then I'll save it onto YouTube on a private link so she can see it to see how to you know yep. do whatever I do. So that was, you're just going to have to find a way. And then years went by, and you just, I got better yeah. at systemizing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I can see that. And, and so oh, now um, fast forward to COVID um, mm -hmm. and you started this, this new business, which I want to hear about, Curve Sculpting. It's, I mean, sounds like a very innovative product, but I'm, I'm going <laughs> to let you do it talk about uh, what it is and I'm curious like how how much how different you found you know starting up a business mm. now after all the experience that you've had um, and you know some of the things that maybe you did differently or, or that you you found easier because of your experience with billionaire beauties mm. so definitely easier yes because obviously I know what you know I have a big team that I manage over 10 people now um, and I can just kind of delegate tasks. So it is a little bit easier, but still, you know, I'm in a different niche. 
So you still got to start from scratch and then finding new bloggers and everything. So I started um, curve sculpting purely through being an avid of waist training. Waist trainer for all the men out there is actually like a corset where it kind of curves your waist in. So my mum is a really avid um, waist trainer. So it rubbed up on me and I started getting to waist training. But I never found like the waist trainer on the market is like, that comfortable on me like i'm a little bit more bustier so i found like the waist trying to like push my ribs up too high and um it's really good for posture as well because i sit on the computer and i tend to like crouch so when you're wearing the waist yeah. trainer you're like your posture it really helps your posture so maybe i should design and, one for i don't know <laughs> and then during maybe yeah and then during <laughs> pandemic yeah during pandemic we had more time to focus on work because I'm like, well, I can't, even, I can't go out to see friends or family. I'm like, might as well launch this new project. Um, and then, yeah, we launched <laughs> Kurt Scott Think during pandemic. Yeah. And how, how has um, this year impacted your business? Um, I would say I took challenges and I just like, the more it got complicated in life, I kind of like just work harder and hide more stuff. So I did the opposite of what other people did, you know, like can, you know, get rid of stuff. But I was hiring more staff, focusing on the online, what value we can give. And then, yeah, just went hard out. And so. And has we demand made, increased like, the because more people. This month during pandemic. Wow. Really? Online. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. during pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's is interesting. It, is it you're in one of those. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it's, it's it's coming in and out a little bit, but um, I'm picking up what you're saying very clearly. Um, but um, mm. yeah, it's one of those, e-commerce is one of those industries where, I mean, you don't have to, you know, I guess I, I can't see how you would need to pivot this, the purchase process. Um, so very fortunate in that regard, but it sounds like it's also forced you to well not forced you but you've chosen to put more into the business given mm. that you've got more time on your hands and and not um you know going out and um visiting your favorite cocktail bars as much <laughs> oh i don't drink that much <laughs> i actually don't party that much i just like go out to eat then party but i think during this um, time uh, um, with covid people don't have an option to go shop People don't yeah. have an option to go shop outside and touch and feel. And people are just bored at home, so they want to go and try stuff, buy stuff. So I think yeah. during that time, I made the opportunity like, to do videos, to educate people, and then to explain as much as you can about how it feels like. And I think that's, that's the best you can do for online so that they would purchase. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And... Yeah. Um, with your Instagram accounts, you have more than one, don't you? So you have different accounts set up that are, mm. what do you call them? Like, um, are they um, topic, do you call them topic specific accounts? What, what's, how would you explain them to the audience? Um, feature account. They're um, feature accounts. Feature so accounts. not only we have, yeah. So not only we have our own accounts, so we have feature accounts. So we feature like other makeup artists or other bloggers to then gain that traction. So you're giving them sort of value and it's that kind of audience that you want to sell to, but you're not selling to them all the time, but you're just throwing things at them and really just giving value to the audience. And, yeah. and so we've how, got how, many how many influencers would you be working with on Instagram? Thousands. Really? Wow. Thousands. Thousands and, and, and so thousands. How do you, yeah. I, I, I'm curious personally, like how do you systemize finding these influencers? How do I systemize finding these influences? Or is it a very manual process? It's a very manual process. But then obviously I would like craft a message and then we'll like message the, the bloggers and it has to be sort of the same sort of niche. I would look for someone similar. Say for instance, I've worked with someone and the engagement is crazy, insane. So then I'll work with their friends. So then it has a more stronger impact when we do promote their following and the other people's following, which are similar following, would be like, oh, if she wore it, she wore it, and she wore it, I'm like, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Like massive impact, so. Yeah, awesome. Um, I'm just going to throw in a couple of questions here from the audience. Yeah. 
Um, I don't actually see the question, so. Okay, well, don't worry, we're bringing them up. Oh, yep. <laughs> Paul, Paul's said, I think it was Greta Van Riel, I hope I pronounced that correctly, who said, if you're not embarrassed by the first iteration of your products, you started too late, would you agree? Absolutely. Well, I know you know you know Greta personally, so. <laughs> Good question, we've Paul. Did, uh, we've would did you, a talk together, yeah. Would you agree uh, with that statement? Yes, but then no. Why? <laughs> It's because my my product ended up being so perfect that it didn't it wasn't like a high demand product, but because I made it so perfect, it looked really pretty. <laughs> yeah. So yes or no? Because my first business didn't make it. <laughs> well, yeah, so perfection yes no, can. You, hopefully that answers your question. But perfection can be a form Complexity of procrastination. Complexity is the enemy. It? Yes, absolutely. I say. I say this word is complexity is the enemy of execution. Keep it simple. That's something saved, that it saved me from, you know, overcomplicating ideas, packaging, because there's still designs everywhere you go. So yeah, for those perfectionists so you out make there, decisions a lot faster now. Words. Yeah, absolutely. Aside from what to eat, that's still a struggle for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Luke is is um, joining in the um, bandwagon of, of uh, complimenting my moustache and says I can add <laughs> pool cleaning to the resume now. <laughs> guys, rate it from um, 1 to 10. 1 to 10, rate it. Put it in the comments what you guys think of his moustache. <laughs> First November. time I've ever grown one. Yeah. Mm. Raising awareness for men's health, doing my part, you know. Um, but... Uh, I, I haven't shaved in years. It's really interesting. Like, yeah, I'm <laughs> going to have to get used to using a razor again. Um, mm. So, so what does the future look like for your entrepreneurial career, Yen? What are you excited about at the moment? What am I excited? I'm excited about new products always. I'm excited about uh, new ideas, getting into different um, uh, niches. Like, say, for instance, I think my life reflects my product. So if I get in, like, say, if I got pregnant and we had, like, I had a baby, then I'll get into pregnancy stuff, or I'll get into baby stuff. It really, it really varies. There's no, there's no, like, end goal, but it's just like on, constantly going for me. I love it. And 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 so you've you kind of going. built this machine um, with the with the website and also with your team that you can quite easily now add new products mm. into it? Machine, so what, what do you mean by machine? Well, um, do you have a process for product development then marketing the product, launching the product, and I guess now that you've done it you know, several times, um, mm -hmm. the team would be used to it and you can kind of roll things out I quicker than people. I think for products, I still do it because I'm so like, I, I'm a, I have to try it. I have to see what's wrong with it, see what to improve in it. So I still am very hands-on with the products we launch. So yeah, I try every lipstick, every lash, every contact lens, every mask, everything. Yeah. Yep. And, and is the plan to, um, I know you were working like, Last year, we talked a little bit about, you know, you're building your personal brand and you developed a mm. YouTube channel. Um, what's going on in that department? Mm. My YouTube channel has been a little bit like cricket. I haven't done much there, but I've done a lot of content for all our new products. Like, say, with the waist trainer, the curved sculpting waist trainer, I'll do a lot of TikTok. So we're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. Oh, really? Yeah, so TikTok is really crazy because you don't know what's going to go viral. So one random video you post, it just went viral. Like we've got like, what I don't know, 50,000 views on one video, which is insane. And then another, you know, 30,000 uh, view on like another video, which is, I'm still sussing TikTok out. But um, there's okay. always something to, yeah. Yeah, Fine. cool. And so are these videos like dancing videos and that sort of thing or, or something different? Mm, yes, you know, surprisingly, here's a funny thing. So because I came from like a poor family, and so I always have this mindset where I'm like, I've got a budget. So even when I launched my, you know, curve sculpting, I thought it, I was like, okay, I still got to be on a budget. So I'm like, 
right now I don't want to spend so much money on the new the new product yet. So I'll do the content myself. So I did the videos myself. And I did the TikTok myself. And then I did one TikTok. My first TikTok dance was like, dun, 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 dun. yeah, anyway, <laughs> that video went viral. And then we knew, I'm like, oh, you know what? Since it, it's so good, I'm going to put it on um, Facebook um, sponsor ad. And out of all the yeah. videos, that video made the most money, which is really funny. That's wow. That's awesome. So, so you just don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and do you use influencers on TikTok as well? We have tried it. Um, yeah. It's a little bit different because you can't message them directly. You got to message them on Instagram, so you got to go through like the, you know, it's not that direct. Ah, yeah. Okay. Because the only time you can message them is if they follow you back. So, I think maybe right, they do that you. because there's a lot of kids on it. Um, so yeah, is there any know. TikTok influencer agencies or is that a, is that a, just a huge business opportunity waiting to happen? Um, they were saying how TikTok is uh, shutting down in cer certain like countries. So that's why yeah. I kind of stopped investing in TikTok. So I don't know. Did you want to go there? Yeah, cool. And yeah. Um, do you have, have you been TikTok? using LinkedIn? No, oh, look, I do. Um, I've <laughs> Did you do I haven't dance? been doing it. I haven't been doing any dancing, no. What I, what I might do is, uh -huh. is I'll I'll release my first dance video when my moustache gets to four weeks. Nice. <laughs> you, I reckon okay, you so should it, just go on just for the moustache. I'm going to share Mark's vote because his was the highest, 9.96 9 out of 10. 9 point. Wow, Mark. That is, I think 10 being really Everyone, good. Everyone's getting pretty specific. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, awesome. You um, got 3.25. Yeah, Not even 3, but 3.25. <laughs> um, so, again, in your entrepreneurial career, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome so far? Um, the biggest challenge for me is definitely two things. Um, ha having a balanced life, like making time for, you know, people you care about and definitely financial, like... So, you know, with every money you make, I'm like, oh, you know, you know, you make some money, you, you want to just go and buy whatever you want all the time, but then you still got a budget and then re reinvest that back. So having cash flow to keep, you know, reinvesting, because I didn't borrow any money from the bank. So just purely from all my oh, profit no. and savings. And yeah, so definitely two of those things, um, finance, so reinvesting all the time and um balance i always trying to keep a balance i started watching yeah, tv and how, and how do you do that like so being an entrepreneur you've got a mm. remote team um i assume you've been working from home at least this year um mm -hmm. how do you manage your time so that how do you manage your time first of all to stay disciplined um but also mm. to make sure that you're not constantly working it's definitely a struggle I think during pandemic, I worked a little bit more than I do normally. Um, it's a constant struggle. I think for a moment, you just, I have to think like, okay, I have to take a moment. I'm like, okay, I have to be aware. Like I'm working a little bit too much. Um, and then you just do things. Like, like I live with my partner and he's super supportive. But sometimes I'm like, I work a lot. lot so I have to take it to time out and have to be consciously aware of how much I'm working and then go do things with <laughs> like go eat or go walk the dog or something like that. So it's definitely a struggle. Um, it's, but it does get better when you hire more staff. Um, that's, that's why I'm always like trying to hire more staff, making sure that whatever I'm doing, I can then delegate that as much as I can. Yeah. Mm. Do you, do you have a, a business mentor or business mentors? Mm, no, I don't. I, I have a lot of, I surround myself with a lot of business people. Um, but no, I don't have a business mentor. I did a lot of seminars, like, you know, I went to a lot of D, John, John Dimartini. I actually introduced him, didn't I? Um, Dr. Yes, John did. Dimartini, yes. Tony Robbins. Um, yes. yeah, but more Dr. John yeah. Dimartini's work. <laughs> and surrounding yourself with entrepreneurs is an interesting one. Sorry, I've just knocked the table. Mm. Um, so I've, I've found that, um, <laughs> out of the, from the entrepreneurs that I've spoken to, um, they found that mixing mm. with other business owners has been very important to um, mm -hmm. 
I don't know, keeping their head on straight. I, I certainly found it as well. Like in the first year in business, um, mm. many of my friends weren't entrepreneurs. And, you know, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of hard. You need someone to b- bounce things off who's not going to freak out. Um, you know, because a lot of the things we go through, most entrepreneurs have been through. Um, mm. Like you talked about, talked about cash flow problems before. And I, I remember um, in my first year in business, like when I grew my team, I had month 11, I had nine contractors working for me. Mm. And I was literally getting to the point where every month I had, at the end of the last week of the month, I had to run out to sell enough to pay everyone. <laughs> mm. And I made the mistake of like, going to console in a friend that wasn't an entrepreneur and get his feedback on like what I was doing. And he's just like, what, what are you, you, you can't pay your staff. What are you doing? Like freaking out completely. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, when now they've got these, these business owners around me, they don't freak out at all. They cut completely understand. And, and I just have so much healthier, so much healthier. And sometimes like, especially during COVID, like, um, I haven't necessarily been doing things socially as much with other entrepreneurs and I, and um, sometimes like just sitting down with somebody for 10 minutes for a coffee, mm. I can get one idea that completely like, it just makes my life so much easier. Um, yeah. So is that surrounding yourself with other business owners? Is that something that you've consciously made an effort to do? So since I was young, I've always been more mature. So I've always attracted more older people towards me. And I always found like, with people that can learn off regardless, you know, honestly, some is not an entrepreneur, like they're, they're an avid user of something that I'm like, oh, that's amazing. I'm going to make that into like a product. So I think having a balance of both is really good because if you have your business people, they always talk about business all the time. You can't have fun sometimes. Or if you're yeah. with your friends who aren't entrepreneurs, you want to just not think about work sometimes. So it really depends. Like I, I think I have a really good balance. Yeah. yeah. So We've, appreciate you, you've said You've certainly done a great job. And I think that um, I encourage you to continue with the YouTube stuff. I think like other <laughs> business owners are going to get a lot out of it. Um, mm. I certainly appreciate your content. I think I think you're doing a fantastic job. And, and there's a lot we can learn from the way that you've set up your business with your remote team and, and um, you know, e-commerce, social media is, is a foreign world to a lot of us. So um, I think um, we can mm. all, you know, grow a lot from, from learning from you. I'll, I'll actually tell you why I actually did start a YouTube because you know like YouTube is very time consuming and you got to record and you got to edit and then you got to upload uploading takes a long time especially if your video is long so I started that doing YouTube because I wanted to challenge myself so I like to set challenges for myself and I said because I was so nervous in front of videos and I couldn't be myself and I was awkward and I wanted to be able to be okay on videos and if I went anywhere so I started setting a goal to do a video a day for over a month. I did it like for one one and a bit month. And wow. that's when I started the YouTube. And then, so that was when I was sharing everything. Like so we got to the point, I think the third video, I'm like, oh my God, I, I'm running out of things to say. So then I share about my day to day, about what I'm doing and my hiring and yeah, all the emotions, you see it through all my videos. So yeah, it's exciting. Okay, and but, um, Yeah, I, th- I, th- I thought it was awesome, but I know it's time consuming. I know it is time okay. consuming to keep it up. So where's the best place that people can follow you and you know keep an eye on what you're up to? Is it Instagram? Is it LinkedIn? Is it YouTube? Where do you prefer people to get in touch? <laughs> no. um, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely Instagram. TikTok. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no. I only do it on my business account. Um, okay. On Instagram at Yen Japney. Yen Japney. I was going to say yenjapney.com. No. <laughs> um, Yen Japney on um, Instagram. Only on Instagram. I'm really on Facebook. I only do it for business, but um, yeah, Instagram, find me there. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just before we go, I want to get your professional mm-hmm. opinion on this suggestion. Mm-hmm. What do you think about a TikTok and Instagram reel of the Mo Progress? Take us on your growing journey and use this as an opportunity. So, I, so as I understand it, an Instagram reel would be like at the end of the month, I could do like these pictures. Showing the mo growing is that is that what that is? No, 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 no. Instagram Reels is like a TikTok, so yeah. uh, you know, like the video, and it's like short. You can only do like fifteen seconds, um, short video, so it goes on repeat. So you know how TikTok it goes on repeat. You click on the video and it, go, it keeps repeating. So that's yeah. Instagram version of TikTok, and so yeah. maybe she's saying for you to share something on it. But here's the funny thing: not all Instagram account you can see Reels. 
I got right. some accounts. Some accounts I had real, some account I couldn't even add it. Or I can't even see it. So Right, yeah. okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do the pictures of the mo at the start or well, no mo do a video. and then do week video. one, week two, week three, and then I'll just show it like slowly growing, mm. and then maybe I'll do a dance. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone everyone who thinks of that song who's my friend they're like oh my god every time I think of that song I think of your dance. But it's pretty funny. You have to send it to me. Maybe it that could be my. I'll, video. I'll start practicing. <laughs> 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 All right. Thanks so much for joining us, Yen. For everybody that tuned in, have a fantastic week in business and we'll see you next week on Monday Night Live. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. See you.